Hey guys, Major Kate here, and today we're going to go over every single tactic and strategy that we have talked about in the last 10 episodes, along with a few case studies. This is going to be broken down into a two-part series because it's just way too much to cover in one single video. Consider this your master debrief. Now, this will not be a replacement to my tactics and strategy series, but more of a comprehensive list, something for you to reference to just in case you need an extra edge on that battlefield. The nitty gritty details will be in every single episode and all the links will be down in the description below. You got a lot of catching up to do. So let's debrief. Before you can fly, you need to know how to land. This is a repositioning maneuver and a defensive one. The X marks the spot where the enemy has the advantage. But right off rip, let us get something straight. If you get shot from an unknown position, you're on the X. If you have high alert and you get spotted, you're on the X. In both of these occasions, your mindset should not be to stop and look for the enemy. Instead, it should be to reposition, then re-engage. In both of these situations, the enemy has a clear sight of you, putting him at a tremendous advantage. If you stop to look, you'll be giving him exactly what he wants, a sitting duck. It's important to note that moving behind cover is not the same as possession concealment. The enemy is not stupid. Just because he can't see you doesn't mean they don't know where you are. The whole point of this tactic is to take the advantage away from the enemy before engaging them. If you don't do this, you'll be willingly handing him the kill. Getting off the ax is something that we use in every single match and multiple times in engagement. Keeping your position fluid and the enemy guessing is a really good way to counter almost everything, including the nine other tactics in the series. This dude has the complete advantage. Saw me first, shot first. Even took down all my plates. But if you reposition, you take that advantage away from them. Look at him, thinking I'm just gonna stay in the same place. Dummy. Like I said before, high alert is one of the most useful perks when getting off the X. Except that in this case, I was never even on it. So we are just getting out of a heavy gunfight, and I lost both of my teammates. Before I approached the buy station, my high alert goes off. Instead of stopping and trying to figure out where he is, immediately I reposition, getting to a place where I can now use the cover to my advantage. And now that thermite will put him on my axe. He has no other choice but to fight me on my terms. There's only one reversal to this tactic, and that is high alert. It can help you get off the axe before you're ever even on it, and since you know which side you're getting spotted from, it can give you a clear path. That way, you're not repositioning aimlessly. High compress is the high ready tactic. High ready meaning you're ready for the fight. In the AO, there's no such thing as a good surprise. Call of Duty is a game that has both sound and visual cues, like red dots on the minimaps, door opening, footsteps, windows breaking, the list is endless. You need to manage your expectations by taking the information that is presented and acting accordingly. If one of these cues pops up in the immediate area of operation, then it's best to stop what you're doing, tense up, and expect a gunfight. In layman's terms, no matter how amazing your reflexes are, how fast your sprint out time is, or how fast your gun can aim down sight, it will never beat having a gun up and expecting the enemy. These case studies are all about using those cues to know where the enemy is. The minute he broke that glass, he was already on his way to the gulag. Something to keep in mind is that even though you might be using a suppressor, doesn't mean the enemy is. After the fight, you should expect a visit from a third party. After every unsuppressed engagement, don't move, sit still, and listen.
like clockwork. Third party imminent. There are two reversals to the strategy. One of them is dead silence. Your first steps will be non-existent and you can move about freely. And the second is to reverse the tactic within itself. Instead of using the enemy sound and visual cues to know where they are, you use the sound and visual cues to lure the enemy out. Now, there's a conscious decision. You're willingly telling the enemy where you are so you can ambush them. Remember, a red dot on the map attracts a player like Bobby to a red loot box. To them, it's irresistible. Do it! Just do it! Don't let your dream be dream. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! To sum it up, high compress is to be aware of your surroundings and to not let yourself be surprised. More importantly, to not let your carelessness lead the enemy to your location. Pay attention to movements, and maybe, just maybe, you'll stop being a regular at the Gulag. Speak of the devil, and it shall appear. The hand over fist gunfight technique takes us on a behind the scenes tour of the Gulag. The Gulag will always and only see three kinds of players. The aggressive, the tactical, and the camper. The hand over fist gunfight technique works as a way of trial and error. We are going to know what kind of player we're up against by checking them off the list one by one. First is the aggressive. Hit the middle lane and push 20% and check position one. The right side. The right side is position one because that is the side that the enemy spawns in. If not, immediately move to position two. If he's MIA, then now we know we're not dealing with an aggressive type. Next is the tactical. Now that you're on the left, push the left lane another 20%. Keep your eyes forward and try to cover that ground as fast as possible because you're going to be vulnerable for a quick second. From the left, check the right lane. If they're there, eliminate them. If they're not, you know you're dealing with a camper. Keep pushing the left and he will either be standing right in front of you or somewhere in his spawn. He won't expect the aggression and you will usually catch his flank. Eliminate the timid roach and get back to the AO. Check position one. Perfect. Moving on to position two. All right, now position three. Welcome to a double tap show. Last, position four. There is no reversal to this tactic. Playing it safe and not being aggressive is just gonna lead you to lose to a stun grenade or a C4. Or worse, be forced to fight over that stupid flag. Instead, employ the hand over fist gunfight technique next time you're in the gulag. Know that the trick to this tactic is speed. The faster you move, the better. The whole tactic relies on you beating the enemy by getting to those key positions first. It's a full sprint, not a marathon. Don't hesitate, be aggressive, and your redeployment will be imminent. Get good, the hyper-aggressive tactic. This tactic is all about killing on a budget, getting the work done with as little as possible. To not get stuck in that gear race. You don't need a loadout. You don't need a UAV. And don't get me wrong, those things are very, very nice to have, but you don't need them. And you definitely don't need to do 27 recon contracts to know where the large circle is. I'm looking at you, Bobby. Yeah, yeah, at you. The tactic is all about being hyper aggressive and seeing as many situations as possible to move before you are ready. Getting good in Warzone does not come from watching best loadouts for your little M41 or MP5 on YouTube. It comes from practice. Specifically, hot dropping. To reign knowledge reigns supreme, and that's the goal. Instead of avoiding quarry and scrapyard, drop on them consistently till you dominate that area. Play king of the hill till you're the king. 
And when you're done, move on, hot drop somewhere else, rinse and repeat. These case studies are all about working with almost nothing. No weapon, no problem. Let's put in work with this launcher. Now notice, the launcher gets me the kill. The kill gets me the gun. Now, no rest for the wicked, so let's keep it moving. This guy obviously has superior firepower, and I know that I'm in a gunfight that I cannot win, but immediately get off the X. Now, I'm gonna stop that assassination real quick. And before his teammate catches our flank, again, move before you're ready. Hit him again. Just came out of the gulag. You gotta use the hand over fist gunfight technique. I'm gonna grab my loadout, and the minute I do, I see two hostiles. Now my teammate is 250 meters away. Sit rep, two plates, and 20 bullets. And that's more than enough for me to go to work. There is no reversal to this tactic. Choosing to play passive just because you don't feel you're ready is just prolonging the inevitable. The battlefield doesn't wait for you to be ready. If you need a whole checklist before you can go to work, then make sure that somewhere on that list you jot down that you're gonna fail. Drop in calm areas and shy away from engagements and you will never get better. And if you never get better, then again, prepare to fail. This is the last one that I have for you today. The envelopment maneuver. The envelopment maneuver is an advanced flank, but unlike a traditional flank, which takes it at a 90 degree angle, the envelopment is to attack the enemy where they least expected and from the best position. To pull this move off, you only four separate things to come together seamlessly. A distraction known as a point, sound concealment, an extremely aggressive player known as the flank, and communication. Communication is key. Talk to your team, Bobby. Talk to your damn team. Now, there's a three-part maneuver. Let's start off with the first part, and this is the point. The point has three jobs. First, to be bait. This entails willingly engaging in a fight that the point knows they cannot win. Meanwhile, making it enticing for the opposition to engage. It is important that this part of your team understands that their job is to keep the enemy busy, not to win the engagement, but to absorb and return gunfire. Are you taking notes? Oh, okay. The second job is to conceal movements by using unsuppressed weapons. This means at all costs, even without having a visual, you should keep up that suppressive fire. And the third and final job is to feed updated intel on the enemy, aka mark them, giving the flank a clear path to the best position from which to attack. The next part is up to the flank. This part of your team has two jobs. The first is to find the best position from which to attack the enemy from, on the fly. The second is to be extremely aggressive and cover as much ground as fast as possible without the worry of the first that's being heard, because the point should be concealing them with that suppressor fire we talked about. Before we move on to part three, another important note is that you must make the point believable. You sell the illusion by splitting off the least of your forces. For the love of God, don't be playing trios and have two people flanking and one person be point. If you do this, the point will be eliminated before the flanks get into position. The trick to this maneuver is to cement the enemy so the flank can reach that position of power. Finally, let's move on to the third part, the actual envelopment, where both the point and the flank launch an all-out attack, leveling the opposition. My teammates are going to be point and I'm gonna be the flank. Now, I'm gonna cover that ground as fast as possible. Meanwhile, they keep giving me constant enemy ping. Most of the time, when the flank is getting into position, they won't have a visual on the enemy because their whole point is for them to not be seen nor heard. Those pings are so important. 
they will give me a heading on where to go. I'm gonna flank car left. Meanwhile, my teammates are gonna launch a cluster strike. Now that's gonna push them into the envelopment. Splitting up your forces is something that the enemy never expects. I'm able to take down two guys before letting the circle and another cluster strike finish them off. This tactic has multiple variations, such as a close and open embellement. You gotta hit the top right link if you wanna learn more. Also, I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Twitch. Link in the description below. If you found this video helpful in any way, consider subscribing. And a like rating is always appreciated. I'll see you in part two. Major Cade, out.